Introduction Part 2 at Al Medina. In the first year of his reign at Yathrib, the Prophet made a solemn treaty with the Jewish tribes, which secured to them equal rights of citizenship and full religious liberty in return for their support of the new state. But their idea of a prophet was one who would give them dominion, not one who made the Jews who followed him as brothers of every Arab who might happen to believe as they did. When they found that they could not use the prophet for their own ends, they tried to shake his faith and his mission and to seduce his followers. The behavior in which they were encouraged secretly by some professing Muslimin who considered they had reason to resent the prophet's coming since it robbed them of their local influence. In the Medina Suras, uh, Suar, there is frequent mention of these Jews and hypocrites you know, it's not talking about all the, uh, you know, it's, it's not saying, well, every Jew that you don't find verses that say that. Till then, the Qibla, the place towards which al Muslimin turned their faces in prayer, had been Jerusalem. The Jews imagined that the choice implied a leaning toward Judaism and that the prophet stood in need of their instruction. He received command to change the Qibla from Jerusalem to the Kaaba at Mecca. The first part uh, Surah 2 relates this Jewish controversy. The prophet's concern as a ruler was to establish public worship and lay down the constitution of the state, but he did not forget that the Quraysh had sworn to make an end of his religion, nor that he had received command to, flight, uh, to fight against them till they had ceased from persecution. After he had been twelve months in Yathrib, several small expeditions went out led either by the prophet himself or some other of the fugitives from Mecca, for the purpose of reconnoitering and dissuading other tribes from siding with the Quraysh. These are generally represented as warlike, but considering their weakness and the fact that they did not result in fighting, they could hardly have been that. You know, 43 expeditions that the prophet ordered. He didn't take part in them all, but he ordered. They weren't all fights. Though it is certain that they went out readily, ready to resist attack, it is noteworthy that in those expe expeditions only fugitives from Mecca were employed, never natives of Yathrib, the reason being that if we accept Ibn Khaldun's theory that there is no other, and there's no other explanation, that the command to wage war had been revealed to the Prophet at Mecca after the Yathrib men had sworn their oath of allegiance at al aqaba and, in their absence, their oath foresaw fighting in mere defense, not fighting in the field. Blood was shed, and booty was taken, at, you know, spoils. In only one of those early expeditions. And then it was against the prophet's orders. Oh, well. Yeah, remember that. The, there's one case that they... Prophet sent people to find out what was going on, and blood money had to be paid. So, you know, you can't blame that on the prophet, because um, he he didn't say that. He just said go check out what was going on. Um, one purpose of those exp expeditions may have been to accustom the Meccan Muslims, Muslimin, to go out in warlike trim. For thirteen years, they had been strict pacifists, and it is clear from several passages of the Quran that many of them, including it may be the Prophet himself, hated the idea of fighting even in self-defense, and had to be inured to it. Well, wanted to purify the community in their um, addressing the issue. Didn't want anybody to uh, do it just for revenge. In the second year of the Hedra, the Meccan merchant's caravan was returning from Syria, as usual, by road, which passed not far from Yathrib. As its leader, Abu Sufyan, approached the territory of Yathrib, he heard of the Prophet's design to capture the caravan. At once, he sent a camel rider on to Mecca, who arrived in a worn-out state and shouted fanatically from the valley to the Quraysh to hasten the rescue unless they wished to lose both wealth and honor. A force of a thousand strong was soon on its way to Yathrib, lest it would seem with the hope of saving the caravan than with the idea of punishing the raiders, since the Prophet might have taken the caravan before the relief force started from Mecca. Did the Prophet ever intend to raid the caravan in Ibn Hisham on the account of the 
Tabuk expedition. It is stated that the Prophet on one occasion did not hide his real objective as it had been his custom on in other campaigns. The caravan was the pretext and the campaign a batter. The real objective was the Meccan army. He had received command to fight his persecutors and promise of victory. He was prepared to venture against any odds as well as was seen in batter. But Muslimin, disinclined and ill-equipped for war, would have despaired if they had known from the first day they were to face a well-armed force three times their number. The army of Quraysh had advanced more than half to Yathrib before the Prophet set out. All three parties, the army of Quraysh, the Muslim army, and the caravan, were headed for the water of Badr. Abu Sufyan, the leader of the caravan, heard from one of his scouts the Muslimin were near the water and turned back to the coast plain. And the Muslimin met the army of Quraysh by the water of Badr. Before the, prophet, before the battle, the prophet was prepared still further to increase the odds against him. He gave leave to all the Ansar, natives of Yathrib, you know, the helpers, to return, uh, well, Ansar means the helpers, to return their, to their homes unreproached since their oath did not include the duty of fighting in the field. But the Ansar were only hurt by the suggestion that they could not possibly by the suggestion that they could possibly desert him in the time of danger. The battle went at first against the Muslimin, but ended in a signal victory for them. The victory of Badr gave the Prophet new prestige among the Arab tribes, but thenceforth there was the feud of blood between the Quraysh and the Islamic State, in addition to the old religious hatred. Those passages of the Quran which refer to the Battle of Badr give warning of much greater struggles yet to come. In fact, in the following year, an army of 3,000 came from Mecca to destroy Yathrib. The Prophet's first idea was merely to defend the city, a plan of which Abdul ibn Ubay, the leader of the hypocrites, are lukewarm, you know, people, strongly approved, but the men who had fought it better, and believed that God would help them against any odds, thought it a shame that they should linger behind walls. Now, Muslimin, um, there are hypocrites that are still maintain the status of being a Muslim on the outer thing, but um, we gotta guard against hypocrisy in all forms anyways. The prophet was the Proving of their faith and zeal, gave way to them, and set out with an army of 1,000 men towards Mount Uhud, where the enemy were encamped. Abdul ibn Ubay was much offended by the change of plan. He thought it unlikely that the Prophet really meant to give battle in conditions so averse to the Muslimin, and was unwilling to take part in a mere demonstration designed to flatter the fanatical extremist. So he withdrew with his men a fourth of the army.